Here we go. Ready? What's up? All right, got the hinges. Totally pumped. Nice, huh? A little too shiny, but that's all right. They have lacquer on them, but that's okay. Now, I'll go, you know, we'll just talk about the hinges at another time, okay? So, now that I have the, the whole upper case taken off and the bonnet and everything, the pediment rather, it's time to put this lid on, finally. I'm really psyched. So, the first thing I needed to do was double check the front of my uh, writing surface, okay? This needs to be dead ass straight, guys. It needs to be straight, straight, straight. Now, this wasn't straight before. It, it had a runoff down the end here. It looks good now. You know, so what I needed to do, I just took a shoulder plane. And I just planed off the front of this thing until it was nice and straight, okay? And then after I did that, actually it's a little much on the inside here. But it, it's okay the way that it is. It's like perfect. And then after I re-straighten this, and obviously the, the lid is straight as well, you know, um, I put a center mark on the center of the writing surface, and then what I did is I transferred that center line, hang on, I transferred that center line onto the writing surface, alright? Now this writing surface is still too big, okay? So what I did, I don't know if you can see it, let me see. Well, you know, I'll try to get it a little closer. This is center mark right here, okay guys? It's obviously there, you know? I measured in from both, both ends and then double checked and triple checked it and whatever. Okay, now check this out. From here, it's got like a 3 8 quarter, a strong quarter inch, 5 16 lip going up the side of the case, okay? Half, like half of the case is way too much. So, just a little more than, than a quarter of an inch. So I, I transferred this line here to the other side of the case as well. So, what I did, okay, I put the writing surface down and I put a center line. First I put a center line on the lid right here and then all I do, okay, I lined it up with these two center lines here, line these two lines up, okay, and now you see the inside line right here? Oops, sorry. Where am I? Right here, okay. Now this is basically where I want it to be, right there. But I'm going to leave it oversized, okay? What I'm trying to do right now is just cut this line here, because this line is the rabbit that I need, so this will lip over, over the side of the case and the top of the case. So the first step is cutting it to rough width, okay? Because when I put these breadboard ends on, I left it about an inch, about three quarters of an inch strong on either side of it. All right, guys, well, I'm in the... Uh, machine room ready to cut the breadboard in. Now remember, I always tell you guys, just make sure that the gullet is just coming up through the wood a little bit. I mean the blade, halfway through the gullet it's perfect, okay? You don't want to be up way too high, alright? That's like plenty. Well, you, you probably noticed how I flipped it over this way. You know what I mean? It's because I want to make sure that it's referenced off the same edge on the bottom. You know, so you know you go one way than the other. You know what I'm saying? You just don't want to like flip it endo this way. So it's always important to make sure that you cut everything from the same side. So I'm gonna go over to the. Uh, actually, you know what? I can just stay right here. I need to set up a a, a dado set so I can run this rabbit okay so I'll get to doing that and then I'll turn the old camera back on alright now you can see that I have the auxiliary fence on the primary fence right and you can see that I have a mark right here on the auxiliary fence that's the height that I want to take to half an inch I think yeah to half inch 
So what I need to do is just turn the blade, turn the SR on and come up until the, the teeth just barely nick that mark and then I'll stop the saw and I'll turn it. And I also adjusted the saw already this way. I think it's a half an inch both ways. I have to double check before I run the saw. It's always important to double check. You know, always triple check, quadruple check, whatever. Um, and then I have a test piece right here because once I get it set to where I think I want to run it, before I just run it on that piece of valuable material that I have, I'll just run it on a scrap stock to double check it. You know what I'm saying? So let me uh, crank this bad boy up and see where uh, see what we come up with. All right. All right, now that I've done that, so I'm gonna put on my old hair protection, put on the old lung protection, and I'm gonna cut this thing. Now that I've cut it on the table, so it's time for me to come over to the case to see if it fits, all right? Now hopefully it's not going to fit, it's going to be a little too tight. So you just want to kind of stick it in there and you know what? It's not going to fit. Now you can see that it's obviously oversized still on, on the width. You know, I need, well we'll just keep going through and I'll show you how to do it. So what I need to do is go over to the bench, all right? All right. Now, I want to put a piece of scrap down on the floor because I don't want the edge of this thing getting all mangled. So I just want to gingerly stick it on the floor, you know, not too bad. And then we just want to clamp it in the vise, all right? Now, it's really important that you have your uh, compass, yeah, compass plane. <laughs> your shoulder plane tuned up, okay? It's important, guys. Now, you remember how I told you that you can make this blade stick in from the side a little bit? You know, now if I go this way, the corner of the blade is going to hack the crap out of the side of this thing. So feel the direction of the grain, which way you need to plane. And it feels rough going this way, so I need to plane that way. So I need to adjust the plane, all right? So I'm just going to loosen it up, and I'm going to slide the plane over to the other side of the body. Because I don't want to damage this side of it. So I just want to hold it 90 degrees inside that rabbit, okay? And trust me, you just want to take a couple of these off a little at a time. You don't want to get too aggressive with this, you know? I, you know what, I feel as though that might be a little too aggressive, but that's okay. Now that thing's only press fit in there, and I probably shouldn't have left it like this, but I'm trying to film it as I go and showing you guys what's going on. So this thing is press fit now, so I still need to take off a few more strokes with the uh, with the plane just so it has a little more movement in it because this is just way too tight for what it what it is. So now that I've got it fit and I know that these two center lines line up perfectly, what I need to do now is cut these hinges in. And let me tell you something. This is where your game has to be, it's A game. <coughs> so, let me get set up here, you know, um, I'm a little ahead of the game, usually the lopers would be in and I would just be able to rest this on top of the lopers, but since I don't have the drawers and the lopers in, we're just going to kind of do it off my uh, knees, alright? But I know that these two line up perfectly and this bad boy closes, so that's all I care about. Alright guys, well we might as well just jump right into it, alright? 
Let's see how this goes. I haven't put one of these in a long time. Okay, now you can see that I've already sanded the bottom of this thing and I've taken off all the burrs, okay? Now, you see what I'm saying? Cleaned it all up nicely. Now you can see that I kind of have it mocked out a little bit right here. I just came in six inches to the center of the, um, of the hinge. Now this hinge has, you know, there are three well, obviously, you guys know how a hinge works, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the, the side with the, with the two outside bales or whatever the hell these things are called on the desktop, okay? Now, some people like to go right to the center of the, of the bale, but what I was taught and what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to go right to the outside of it, okay? You see what I'm saying right there, guys? The, yeah, there you go. Instead of being the center of the pin, it's just to the side closest to the to the surface where you want to put it because I want this bail to be outside this line just a little bit so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on right on my mark I already made a mark with my square so I have it here and I mark the back side of it okay I just just a mark now you know a lot of people will tell you to mark it with a knife because a pencil line is too thick for this stuff and it really is so I have my my uh, my knife here and I'm just gonna make a tick mark I mean it's very very small you can't even really see it and then what I do I set my square to that tick mark okay and now how you do that you know if you don't have such good eyes you can you can find the tick mark already with the knife and then just go up to that mark with the square, okay? But my eyesight's pretty good and I can see it. Thankfully, still. So, this is the moment of truth, everybody. Now, I don't want to start the cut mark at the lines, okay? I'm going to stay in about, you know, maybe a sixteenth, a little bit. I might stay back a little bit more because what you definitely do not want to do is strike this mark on the other side of your index lines because you'll see it. You know what I'm saying to you? Now, I'm going to take my hinge, okay? Remember, it goes this way. And I'm going to keep it right on that line that I just struck with my uh, knife here. All right? And sometimes it's cool to do something like this, you know? Just double check and make sure that it's square to what you're doing and you're dead on your line, okay? Man, this is nerve-wracking. And then this is the going for the gusto, everybody. Nice and light, okay? Nice and f***ing easy. Okay? So I struck that line. And now you can see that the line that I just struck is on the furthest outside of the, of the line that I drew. You see what I mean? That's why you just can't really go with a pencil line. So now the next thing I need to do is definitely hold this thing right to that line, all right? And then I'm going to strike the other side. And it's kind of hot. I can't really see because of the shadow. But this is it, fellas, ladies and germs. And I can still double check it with the square. Because I can, I can see the line. It's just hard for me to see it, see it, you know? I know, this stuff's crazy, guys. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. And instead of trying to strike it to the side of the, um, other side of the hinge, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a mark with my knife, okay? You see it? Right there, that little tiny mark. I don't know if you can see it, but it's just a, like a scratch. So... I have my scratch mark, and I'm going to hold my square. I can double check this one, but I know that it's perfect. Look at that. I mean, that's perfect, guys. It's right on that scratch line. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to scratch it. Now, I've already set this to the depth, so I can go right to the corner of it without feeling like I'm going to make a mistake. Now, the risk of doing this here is that you put too much pressure on it with your knife, and you move the square. 
you know, I should really do it this way. So if I make a mistake, it's going to go into the part that's going to be removed, Mr. Powers. But it's uncomfortable for me to hold the square that way. You know what I mean? So I'm just going to hold my breath. See, I indexed, I indexed the line with the knife already. I slide the square over to it. And now I'm just gingerly going to make this skull mark, okay? Like this is just light, 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 everybody. There you go. Now I know that this one's square too. It's perfectly square. All right. Nice and square. You know, I'd like to go deeper, but I'm afraid to. You know, this has a bevel on it, so the deeper I go, the, the, the less accurate that it is. If that makes any sense to you. See that? Now, another very, 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 very important thing to do is this right here. You have to, guys, it's, it's imperative that these things are razor sharp, okay? You want this chisel to be like surgical, okay? Hang on, give me a second. I gotta get my freaking mallet. All right, I have my mallet handy. I might as well back up. Can I back up here? Yeah, you guys get the idea. Now, you don't want to change this line at all, okay? So what I need to do, and it's nerve wracking. Before I, well, I could even put a little, I could put a little down pressure on it. I mean, just a little bit, okay? See this here? That's all I feel. That's all I feel comfortable hitting it with. Hitting it with. I'm nervous. You can tell. So set it. Let's give it a little love. And now I'm just going to remove that material. And this is really, really dangerous. Okay? Because if you bust this out right here, man, oh man, is that going to make for an ugly repair? See that? I'm just gonna just take a little bit out of there. You see that? Now what this does for you guys and for me as I'm doing this, it's gonna take pressure off that back side of the of the um the wood. So when I come down with obviously down pressure, I'm not gonna bruise this this corner, I'm not gonna push it and make it bigger than it is. You see how I have the I have it just a little bit? Hey, you know what would be cool is if I had a helmet cam. <laughs> but that's it, man. Just that little bit. I got some stuff under my nail, huh? So I need to do that, and you can see the scratch line. You see it? Now you can kind of get a good view of it. It almost looks like I went beyond it, but that's pencil. Because if I ran past this corner right here with the um, with a knife, that, that mark is in there forever. So now I'm just going to do the same to this side as I did the other. Sorry. So, all I'm going to do is I'm going to get to doing this, and once I get it close to where it needs to be, I'll let you in on it. Maybe I should do it when you guys are watching, because it is stressful, you know? And this is really, really stressful. It's pretty cool. Where am I? Here I am. So I need to do the same to this side. Now you got to remember that you want to keep the beveled side on the inside, not the outside, because you'll mush that that shoulder. Okay? Ah, oh, perfect. I got the corner of the desk in my way. Here's another really cool way of doing it. It's risky though. You just gingerly take the material out on an angle. The thing, the difficult or dangerous, the price you'll pay for doing this guys is that you'll get up underneath that wood and you'll flake it off and then you'll be done too. So there's like really no room for error here. There really isn't. And I don't really worry about this back line yet because you can adjust the you can adjust the depth of the hinge with that line. So all I really concentrate on is these two side lines. I mean it, I suppose it doesn't matter now because I'm stuck. This is it man. I'm, I'm in it. And I'm still just going to chip away at it. Now, this is a one-inch chisel, and it's really too wide for doing this. So I'm probably going to switch up my, uh, 
my uh, choice of weaponry here and go with a three quarter. Now you don't want to flake that off with your finger either. You want to come back into the into the cut, all right? And it's always better, everybody, just to go slow, all right? Don't try to bang this stuff out. I mean, hardware is really an art form in itself because you can get smoked if you don't do this right. And everybody's, everybody who sees your piece of furniture is going to know you messed it up. <laughs> There's no hiding this stuff. So now that I have it kind of where I feel comfortable taking it out, I can start removing this material. But before I do, what I want to kind of do first is put, a, um, put my marking gauge on the thickness of the hinge and score a line, or at least draw a line on the front of the, on the, um, on the face. Now you can get a Dremel and do this if you wanted to. If you feel like you're not going to bust through the other side of this thing. But I have a lot of hardware to put on this thing, so I might as well get comfortable doing it with this thing because on those drawers and everything else I'm not going to be able to. I would rather always be able to fall back on my hand skills and do something than to do it with a machine. You know what I'm saying to you? Look how much this wood is oxidized over the last six months, huh? Alright, well let's see how this thing works. The problem with using this thing is that it's going to mock up the the writing surface. I don't have to spend a lot of time cleaning it. You know what I'm saying to you? You see how it's already starting to burnish the, all around the corners of this uh, hinge? So I may just have to abandon this little idea I had. I'm going to go back to the old trusty chisel. Chisel, chisel. T chisel. I can know how to use one of these chisels. No freaking problem, guys. Look, when you get close to the end of this thing, you just want to kind of go lightly, you know? It's like I'm pushing pretty hard, but I'm like with my left hand, but I'm really pushing down with my right, because like the danger of this is having it come up and popping through, you know. So you you'd rather go down a little bit than go up. So as long as you're conscious of these little things, you know, you'll be all right. See, and you know what I am going to slow with this one because I haven't done it in so long but once I get comfortable believe me I'll bang out the other one no problem I suppose I should well you know it's too it's too late you know I mean I can take the hinge and I can stick it in there and say oh yeah wow that's perfect but even if it wasn't I'd be dead because I've already took all the material out Tooken, is that even a word <laughs> I have taken the material out you know sorry guys you know so shoot me. I don't know how to f talk. Whatever. All right, guys. Well, here's the moment of truth. Hey, you see that little different piece of wood that's from there? <laughs> that was a mistake I made. I didn't want anybody to know, but it's pretty black and white right there. But you notice how you don't see it on the front? What I did was I just took a little rabbit out of the front of the, the writing surface because the I cut it too short when I went to put the dovetail in, so I just basically cut the ends off and I made a rabbit so the top is the same piece of wood but the front isn't and you would never know if I just didn't tell you but anyways here's the moment of truth alright now this hinge fits perfectly and it's nice and tight all the way around and it doesn't move like at all now remember guys that you just can't make the mistake of putting this side on there you know what I'm saying to you see how this one has the the um, cut on it whatever I don't even know what you call it the double build side of the hinge. Now I'm just going to hold this down and this is where Vix bits become priceless. Okay. Now I know you're going to be tempted to just grab you know a uh, a drill with a slotted tip on it or you know put a Phillips head in there. See I got a bag of Phillips heads? That's a definite no-no on something like this. And the best way to do this guys is with 
regular screwdriver because you're going what I'm going to be able to do is I'm going to be able to feel the tension on the screw. So if it's too tight, I know that I need to back it out and go deeper with the hole. You know what I mean? And I don't ever want to strip this out at all. Like that, it would be the worst. And not only would that be the worst, to be honest with you, the worst thing that could happen is that I, see I'm kind of get a lot of torque on it because I didn't go deep enough with the hole. Like if I had this thing on a, um, on a drill and I was going through there, there's a brass screw. I'd probably put too much tension on it and break the screw. And then I'd really be in a world of hurt. So, I'm just gonna go in and I feel as though I didn't go deep enough with the Vicks bit. So I'm just gonna back it out, okay? And go in a little deeper with the Vicks bit. <coughs> wow. <laughs> Did you know that you could Get up to 100 mile an hour wind out of your lungs when you sneeze. A little tidbit of info for T-Mac. T-Discovery. <laughs> I love that channel. All right, man. Now, the reason why I gingerly approach the hole with the Vicks bit is because I don't want to pop through the bottom. I mean, this screw is barely... It's just almost... It's just long enough, you know what I'm saying to you? And I don't want to mess it up at all. I really don't. Well, it needs to go in a little deeper, but I feel pretty confident that that's where it wants to be. So I'm going to go along, I'm going to zap these two in, you know? And then I will be done with this one. Then it's off to the next one, all right? Getting there, everybody. I'm getting there. I'm kind of on the fence. I think I just may not cut my hair until I finish this thing. Motivate me to finish because I desperately need a haircut. All right? Oh, well, I did hear Fabio um, retired, so maybe I'll take his gig. I can't believe it's not butter. What do you think? <laughs> all right.